I wanted to show a close-up of my large dogs. You can see how I made the standard colors for the white and black Siberian Husky. And then I just had fun with the colors with the other dogs. The only thing to keep in mind is if you use Red Heart yarn, which I used for the red one here or the orange one is called, her name is Jenna, and I use the carrot color Red Heart yarn. And it makes her head a lot larger than the Big Twist yarn. But the problem with Big Twist yarn is that you don't have some of the fun colors. So that's just something to keep in mind if you're using a different type of yarn or style of yarn is that it can come out larger. The other fun thing that I did with the dogs is I made them a mouth and their tongue comes out and each one has a different size. You can see I made a larger one with the black and white Siberian Husky. So you can have fun with that and make different sizes, whatever size that you want for your dog. The black and white Siberian Husky I named Balto. The beige and black I named Togo. And then Jenna is the orange colored dog. Togo has also the color changes on the snout. I didn't show the color changing in this video tutorial, but I do have a separate video tutorial of a dog where I show how to make the color changes. But that's something you can add in the design of your dog too if you wanted to. Here's a look at their collars. This is Togo and he has a cute leather bone shaped collar or a collar with bones on it. And Balto has a black leather with the bones on it. All of the color collars are medium sized and you can also tell that they have different pet clothes on. These are medium sized pet clothes. Balto has a zipper on the back. This is Togo. And then Jenna has a zipper on the back as well as a soft pet outfit with ribbons, pink ribbons. If you like the large bone, I have a separate video tutorial that shows how to make this bone. The bone actually has a zipper so it opens up. On this one I have the little bags that can go with a little clip that can go on the collar and some more bags. So this will be going to the Helen Woodward Animal Shelter along with this Harmony Standard Nester medium sized pet bed. The size for my large dog they are 19 and a half inches tall from the floor to the tip of the ears. The length is 21 inches from the tip of the nose to the back of the body. I do have a written pattern available for these large dogs. It's available for download on Ravelry for a small fee. The next size Siberian Husky dog that I made is the small Siberian Husky dog and this is my favorite one. I really have a lot of fun making these and I'm making some more colors that I'll share on Facebook. The size of these are ten and a half inches tall from the floor to the tip of their ears and they're ten inches long from the tip of the nose to the back of the body so not including the tail. This dog is precious this is Dixie and Ruffy. I just want to get a close-up of the eyes because the eyes are really fun. This one has a slight blue around the edges. This is by Fab Lab Safety Eyes. I got them from Joanne Craft Store. Here's another example of the different eyes that you can use. And then this is Precious, and she has a slight blue around the eyes as well. Here's a closer look at the pet outfits. So, Ruffy has the same matching pet outfit as Balto. 
as well as Dixie has the same pet outfit as Jenna. The size of these pet outfits are extra small and the collars are a small collar. The hair clip that you see in Precious on Precious, these are real dog hair clips. Yarn B has a lot of different fun colors for this size dog. I ended up needing two skeins, so if you're going to be using Yarn B, you're going to need two skeins of this yarn for the main color of your dog. Just be aware that the size will be slightly larger than with the Big Twist. It's barely noticeable. Then last but not least are the extra small puppies which are adorable. The size are 7 inches tall and from the tip of the nose to the back of the body, not the tail, is 7.5 inches. In the video tutorial I show how to make the little crochet baseball hat as well as the collars and the little gold name tag. Here's just a close-up of the two dogs. Again, the eyes are just beautiful. These eyes are by Fab Lab. Again, they have the little blue around the edge. These are just the regular eyes that you can get from Hobby Lobby or Suncatcher Craft Eyes, doll eyes. I show the example of the pipsqueak yarn, which is the soft fuzzy yarn, versus just regular yarn. Here's a close-up of the collar. So I have written patterns for all three of these dogs, all three different sizes. So there's a pattern for the large Siberian Husky, the small Siberian Husky, and the extra small Siberian Husky puppies. The written pattern for all three is available on Ravelry for a small fee for each of them. Now with Jenna I used doll joints to attach the legs and I really didn't like it because the legs were just too loose. So I went ahead and reinforced the legs like I did with my standard dogs. So I went through with the yarn just like I attached the legs from my regular dogs. For this crochet project you're going to need your, both of your crochet hooks, your 4mm and your 3.75mm crochet hook. To get the soft cuddly feel for your Siberian Husky, I would recommend using the Bernat Pipsqueak yarn. And I used one skein. Here's some information about this yarn. Now this yarn can be difficult to work with. I used the Whitey White. So what I did was I used my larger crochet hook. This is my 9 millimeter crochet hook. That way you'll have a large hole to work in using this yarn which makes it easier to use. If you have the same crochet hook with me without the soft end I would recommend just using a pencil grip on the end of your crochet hook. It works great. So if you use this crochet hook I think that you'll find that it isn't as hard as you may think and I'm not going to use this yarn for anything real difficult. I'm going to use a really basic simple stitch so I won't make it hard to use this yarn. You're also going to need a tapestry needle and I use one with a large eye on it. This is what mine looks like. The eyes that I used were from Suncatcher Craft Eyes, the 15 millimeter. They're a beautiful blue color. Just wanted to show a close-up of the blue. The yarn that I used is one skein of the Big Twist Yarn Rainbow Classic 100% acrylic yarn. Here's some information about this yarn. The color is white. Then you just choose the yarn that you want for the color 
of your Siberian Husky. I made a black one also, which I used Big Twist, one skein of the Big Twist yarn, the black colored yarn for the black Husky. And the one on video tutorial, I'm using my Red Heart Super Saver yarn. Let me just give you some information about this yarn. The color I used was Carrot. I bought Red Heart Black Jumbo for the Black Husky for his nose, if you're using a black nose. And also for the mouth, I used the black yarn for the mouth. On video tutorial, I'm going to make for the carrot colored Siberian Husky. I'm going to use Vanna's Choice for the nose. So it has a really pretty color. It's called Caramel Toffee. Here's a close up of the color for the nose for the Siberian Husky on video tutorial. Here's some information about this yarn. So we're going to start with everything that goes on the head for the husky. I'm going to start with the snout and you're going to start with your four millimeter crochet hook. We're going to make the magic circle so just take your big twist white yarn. You're going to drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers. Hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take your four millimeter crochet hook. You're going to go under those two loops around the middle fingers and bring up a loop. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. Then we're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So six single crochet. I just finished one. Two. Four. And the last one. So I have six single crochet into the magic circle. Just take your forefinger and your thumb. You can see how I'm holding the crochet hook. Hold the base of those six single crochet. You have the two loops on the opposite side. You're going to pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Just gently close it as much as you can. Don't worry if you don't get it completely closed because you can close it more later. Then take that loose yarn end and pull on that. Then just turn your work to work into that first stitch. And then we're going to place two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So there's one. I'm just going to do a couple of them with you. I'm going into the same stitch, bring up a loop, to complete two single crochet into that first stitch. Then I'm going into the next stitch to make two single crochet into the same stitch. And then I'll have a total of four and then I'm going to keep repeating this all the way around and when you get back to the beginning you'll have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So now I have 12 stitches total in the round. You can close the center of your magic circle at this point if you need to. Just turn your work over, take that loose yarn end and just gently pull on it and then you can see how it closes the center nicely. Then you're just going to need a yarn marker I use one of my scraps of yarn and just place it right where you left off and then that will help you keep track of your stitches in the round. And we're going to start the next round with an increase round which means we're going to increase the number of stitches in the round. So, so far we have 12 stitches and by the time we finish the next round we should have 18 total. So just take your crochet hook, go into that first stitch bring up a loop and then you're just going to make one single crochet into that first stitch 
and then in the second stitch you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. I'll make one more set with you. So one single crochet into the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then just keep repeating this pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back. So you should have finished that round with a total of 18 stitches in the round. Now for the next increase round, go ahead and move your yarn marker up. And then you're going to make one single crochet into the next two stitches. And then two single crochet into the third stitch and then just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. You should have finished with 24 stitches after that round. We have two more increase rounds to make. The next increase round is going to be one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So that last round should have had 30 stitches total in the round. Now for your last increase round you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you have a total of 36 stitches in the round for the snout. Now you're not going to be making increase rounds. So now you're only going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. So only one single crochet into every stitch around back to the yarn marker. Now when you get back to the yarn marker, you should still have a total of 36 stitches in the round. So we're not, we're not increasing the number of stitches and we're not decreasing the number of stitches. We just want to maintain this same size. So instead of removing the yarn marker, you're just going to continue around making just one single crochet in every stitch around and you're going to keep continuing and using your yarn marker to count your rounds. So you can see I finished one. And we want a total of 14 rounds. So go ahead, finish one single crochet in every stitch around for 14 rounds, and then come back. So this is what my snout looks like after I finished 14 rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. And then when you're finished, just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, and then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then bring the yarn through both loops on the hook to complete the slip stitch. Then finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. and then just cinch down the knot, remove your yarn marker, and then you're going to set the snout aside for now. We're going to work on the nose. You're also going to need a pair of scissors. For the nose, I used my toffee colored yarn. Unless you're making your black Siberian Husky, then you would use your Red Heart Black. But for the carrot colored Siberian Husky, I used this gorgeous toffee colored yarn from Vanna's Choice. And you're going to take your yarn and just fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then take your 3.75 millimeter crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for your slip knot. Just cinch down the knot. Now you're going to make a chain of 10. 
So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, I'm just going to show you four of them, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of ten, and then come back. After you finish your chain of ten, then you're going to take your crochet hook and go into the second chain from the hook. So into the second chain from the hook, you're going to bring up a loop. You have two loops on your hook. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a single crochet. Then you're going to go into the next stitch bring up a loop and make a single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch back across. I'll do one more with you. And then when you reach the end, come back and I'll show you what to do next. So this is what my work looks like so far. And I have one stitch left. I'm going to place three single crochet into that last stitch. So three single crochet into the last stitch. You can see how I'm holding the loose yarn end along the opposite side. I'm going behind it and bringing up a loop to complete my three single crochet in that last stitch. After you finish your three single crochet in the last stitch, you're going to turn your work so you're going to work on the opposite side. So we've just made our single crochets all along. Now it's on the bottom. Three single crochet in the last stitch and now on the opposite side we're going to start working in rounds. You're going to go into that first stitch on the opposite side. Go behind the loose yarn end. Bring up a loop and make your single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. I'll work one more with you. And then when you reach the end, come back and I'll show you what to do next. This is how my work looks so far. I have one stitch left on the end. I'm going to place three single crochet into that last stitch. Now, you should have 21 stitches all the way around. Don't worry if you don't have the exact same number of stitches as me. As long as you're pretty close, it won't matter. Then go ahead and take your yarn marker and place it right where you left off. So now it will matter how many stitches you have in the round. So whatever you ended up with, you should have the same number of stitches for each round. For mine, it's going to be 21 stitches in the round, and I'm going to make one single crochet in every stitch around until I've completed a total of three rounds. So three rounds of only one single crochet in every stitch around. This is what my nose looks like after finishing three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around. Go ahead and remove your yarn marker. 
Then you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over, just like we did before. Just bring the yarn through both loops, then go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the nose onto the snout. And then you can determine which side you want for the right side of the nose. I'm going to use this side as the right side. To stuff the nose, you're just going to cut a bunch of yarn of the same color. And then I just use the same colored yarn as a stuffing. That way it won't show through. And if it does, it's the same color as the yarn that you used for the nose, and it looks good. Now you're just gonna put the long loose yarn in that you had on your nose onto your tapestry needle to get ready and sew it onto your snout. You wanna take your nose, and I have my loose yarn end on video, I'll just say it's to the left. And then just take your snout. I usually put the loose yarn end on the snout on the bottom. And then use your magic circle as a guide. And then you're going to line up the bottom of the nose into center the nose on the magic circle. And then line up the bottom edge of the nose right on the top of the magic circle. And then sew it in place. So you can see how I centered my nose with the magic circle and then lined up the bottom edge right along the top of that magic circle. And then I'm just going to take my tapestry needle and then I'm just going to sew the bottom of the nose first. Just going in and out along the bottom edge or the bottom stitch. And then I'm going to go all along the nose, the bottom edge, and sew it in place. And this is how it looks so far. Now we're going to make the bottom portion of the mouth or the snout. Now you're going to go back to your big twist white colored yarn and your four millimeter crochet hook. You're going to take and fold the white yarn over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook, the four millimeter, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for your slip knot. Now we're going to make a chain. I'm going to make a chain of 15. I'm just going to show you four of them. Just yarn over and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish your chain of 15 and then come back. After you finish your chain of 15, you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, make your single crochet, and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across, which should give you a stitch count of 14. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet in every stitch back across, and then come back. Now, after you finish your last single crochet, then you're going to chain one, turn your work, that first chain one 
counts as your first stitch for the next row. Then take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. Then you're going to go back across, making one single crochet into every stitch across. And when you finish this row, you should still have a stitch count of 14 for the row. Now, I would double check, make sure you have a total of 14 stitches for that row. And then you're just going to keep repeating the chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch, and then just make one single crochet in every stitch across. And then each time you finish each row, you should have a stitch count of 14. And including this row, you should make seven more rows. So seven more rows, including this row, so this is one, make six more, which will give you a total of seven more additional rows of a stitch count of 14. This is how your work should look after you're finished. You can see how I have straight edges on both sides. This is how your work should look as well. Now, when you finish that last row, you're not going to chain one. You're just going to turn your work, and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over. And when you finish this row, you should have a total of 13 stitches. So one single crochet in every stitch across for one row of a stitch count of 13, and then come back. Then, after you made sure that you have a stitch count of 13, again, when you reach the end, you're not going to chain one. You want to turn your work and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. And what you're doing is you're reducing the stitch count by one because you didn't make a chain one. So by the time you finish this row of one single crochet in every stitch across, double check and make sure that you have a stitch count of 12. So for this row, you're going to have a stitch count of 12 and then come back. Then for your last row you're going to turn your work, no chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch over, and then for this last row you're going to have a stitch count of 11. So one single crochet into every stitch across for one row and you'll end up with a stitch count of 11 and then come back. So on this last row there's 11 stitches but you're not going to make a single crochet for the 11th stitch. So if you already made a single crochet in this last stitch which gives you a stitch count of 11, go ahead and take out that last stitch because we're going to slip stitch into the last stitch. So take your crochet hook, go into that last stitch, yarn over, and then bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch, then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then this is what my work looks like so far. So you can see how there's just a slight curve towards the front of the bottom portion of the snout. Now for mine, I'm making the top part of this in black, so I'm going to make it the exact same way with the black yarn. Now if you didn't want to buy black yarn for this portion, you can just make another portion with the white colored yarn. But go ahead and make this exact same piece and I'm making mine in black. If you want to make 
the bottom portion of the snout with black yarn, then you're going to need, I use my Red Heart Jumbo Black, so I'll have plenty left over for other projects. But if you don't want to buy black yarn at this time, for the bottom portion of the snout, you can just use the white colored yarn. So now you should have two pieces, the one that you made in white and then the one that you made in black. And again, if you didn't want to buy the black yarn, you could have made two, two pieces of the same color white. So now you're going to take, and for the black portion, I want that to be the inside of the mouth. So that's going to go on top. And make sure that you have the shorter ends together and the longer ends on the opposite side. Then we're going to take and join the white colored yarn. But first I'm going to take and tie a knot with my two loose yarn ends. Then I'm going to take my four, four millimeter crochet hook, go right through the two pieces with your crochet hook. And then you're going to join with the same colored white yarn that you used for the mouth, the big twist. Just bring up a loop and then make sure that you tie a knot. Then you're going to take and chain one, then go into the next stitch over. Make sure you go through both pieces. Then you're just going to bring up a loop and then make a single crochet. And then you're just going to go and equally space all the way across one single crochet in each stitch and what you're doing is you're joining the two pieces together with your white yarn and you're just making one single crochet into every stitch around all the way around and back across to the other side when you reach the end come back so here you can see how I made one single crochet all the way down along the one side and I'm in the bottom corner before I go to the front of the bottom portion of the snout. So I'm going to place two single crochet into this stitch. So two single crochet into the same stitch and then I'm going to continue across the front And then you just do the same thing on the opposite side here. And then just turn and finish making a single crochet all the way up the opposite side. This is how your work should look when you're finished. Then when you're finished with your last stitch, go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then I'm just going to stuff all loose yarn ends into the center. We're going to put a little bit of stuffing in this later, but for now the bottom portion of the snout is finished. Now I'm going to show you how to make the tongue. For the tongue I used Red Heart Super Saver. Here's some information about this yarn. I used the color Shocking Pink. Then you're just going to take your pink yarn and I'm still using my four millimeter crochet hook and for the larger tongue for my black Siberian Husky I started with a chain of 12 but for the carrot colored Siberian Husky I'm going to make a little smaller tongue so I'm going to start with a chain of 8 so you just take your pink yarn fold it over on itself With your middle finger and thumb, hold the base of the loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for your slip knot. I'm just going to show you my chain of four, but you're going to continue and if you're making the large tongue, you chain 12, 
the smaller tongue chain eight. So just yarn over, go through the loop for one chain, two, three, four. Then you're just going to take your crochet hook, go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, and make your single crochet. Now for the smaller tongue, I'm going to go into the next stitch, bring up a loop for a single crochet. You're going to end up with seven stitches for this row. For the larger tongue, you're going to end up with 11 stitches. So now you can make the length that you want for your tongue. You're going to chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to go into the next stitch over for your single crochet. And when you're finished with this row, you should still have a total of seven stitches for the smaller tongue. For the larger tongue, again, you're going to have 11 stitches. So you can play. And, and make the size tongue that you want. This is about half the size tongue compared to my Black Siberian Husky. So if you like the larger tongue, then you can start with the chain of 12 instead of the chain of 8. So I should have a total of 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I have 7 stitches and then chain one, turn your work, and then repeat until you have the length that you want for the tongue. So for the larger tongue, I made 16 rows total, but for my smaller tongue, I'm going to stop after 12 rows. Now after you finish the size that you want for your tongue, I made a total of 12 rows for this one. Then you're not going to chain one. You're just going to turn your work. And then you go into the next stitch over to make your single crochet. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So if you have the larger tongue, you'll have 10 stitches, and with the smaller tongue, you'll have six stitches. Then again, you just turn your work again, no chain one, go into the next stitch over to make your single crochet. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And so the larger tongue would have nine stitches. The smaller tongue has five. Then I'm going to turn again, go into the next stitch over for one, two single crochet, three single crochet, and four. So for the larger tongue, that would be eight. Then eight stitches. Then you're going to turn your work, go into the next stitch over for one single crochet, two single crochet, and then I'm going to slip stitch into that last stitch. So on the larger tongue, it would be the seventh stitch and with the smaller tongue it would be in the third. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then your tongue is all finished. So this is the bottom portion of the snout and this will be the inside of the mouth. And the tongue you can kind of have fun with so it can hang out as much as you want. So you can have it hang over the side, the front, the other side, but we'll arrange that later. For now, you can set the tongue and the mouth, bottom portion of the snout, aside. So you can set the top 
bottom and tongue aside for now.